Welcome everyone to the School of Business and Humanities uh, student webinar. Uh, my name is Jonathan and I'm in the marketing department um, and today um, I'm joined by five students um, from the School of Business and Humanities um, and they're here to give sort of the student perspective on life at DKIT and um, what the course is like, what student life is like um, and no one can really describe it better than they can. And um, so i um, just going to go around and briefly introduce themselves so um, I have them in a certain order so um, Elise do you want to um, introduce yourself first? Yeah, hi, my name is Elise. I'm level four in global marketing. Okay, and Jessica? Hi, my name is Jessica. I'm in my final year of the Bachelor of Honour of Business degree in DKIT. So, and Sammy? Hi, my name is Sammy and I'm in year three of Business and Management. And Patrick? Hi, my name is Patrick and I'm in the second year of Business and Technology. Okay, and finally Josh? Hi, my name is Josh, and in year two of my uh, Bachelor of Arts degree. Great. Okay. Well, thanks very much uh, for joining us today, guys. Um, a number of different questions we'll go through, and we'll get kind of different people's opinions on things as well, and um, we'll kind of take it from there. So the first, the first question we have, and um, the entrance point to DKIT is, why did you choose DKIT in the first place, and why did you choose the course that you're on? So maybe Elise, if I can start with you on that one. Yeah, I chose DKIT because I, I lived only down the road from it, but I chose my course because I came in as a mature student and I used to work in admin a lot and I always had an interest in marketing, so I chose marketing to go into that career. Okay, brilliant. Um, what about yourself, Jessica? Um, it was really the open day that helped me to decide to go to DKIT. On the day of the open day, we got to meet some of the lecturers, the past students, and really just have a look around the campus. It was really the campus that was nice and small. It wasn't that big, so you could find your way around it nice and easily. And as for the course itself, I've always been interested in business, but I didn't know what aspect of business I wanted to go into. So the course that I'm doing, I do everything like from marketing to HR to finance, and it's really helped me to decide what route I want to go down. Okay, brilliant. Um, uh, Josh, I'm going to ask you because, because the rest of the guys are all kind of doing business subjects and you're doing arts. Um, and so, just what was your kind of decision making process between coming on the course then? Um, yeah, um, I, I, I did a PLC actually, you know, for uh, sort of like DKT or around DKT a few times. And I really like the campus. Um, I also have a big passion for history, especially from uh, secondary school. Um, and um, yeah, I thought the course was very good. I had a fair variety. I'm doing politics and history at the moment, uh, which you can do various other things. Um, and yeah, I thought it was really good. Um, I, uh, I I was going to go to D DCU and all the and a couple other places, but then um, I think, like Elise was saying, that it's just uh, sort of the, the, the sort of uh, how far you have to go to the college. Like, I didn't have done the hostel, it was pretty close to the campus. So. Um, for all those reasons, I chose to go to DKIT. So. Okay, that's brilliant. Okay, well, that's great. Um, well, the next one that we have then, I suppose, how did you experience then settling into DKIT? So, um, you know, you were here in your in your first year and um, things are very different to school. So, um, how was the kind of settling in period? Did you adjust? Did you have any challenges at the start of it? Um, maybe, Sammy, I could go to you for this one. Um, well, I didn't do my first year in DKIT. I did a PLC with OFI and then I transferred into second year. So I feel like that prepared me better for like settling into college because I already had a routine that was similar to college. So settling in wasn't so hard. And it was actually quite nice to go into second year. Like I didn't feel like I missed out much. Okay, that's great. Yourself, Patrick, um, how did you find sort of the, the kind of first time in DKIT? Yeah, I found it uh, quite good, like, uh, because there's, like, always someone to help you when you're stuck and stuff. So, like, getting around was quite easy around the campus because it's not so big. So, you're always able to find where you need to go. And the lecturers made everything easy because there was so much accessibility to, like, everything with Moodle and stuff like that. So, uh, it just wasn't as hard as it would have been going to, like, another bigger college. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what a lot of people can find. Uh, the, the, the smaller class sizes really help, um, you know, uh, and make that you're not going to a class where there's 80 or 100 people and you can feel anonymous, you know, and the small class size really help. And we get that feedback quite a lot when people, when people come to us. Okay, um, in terms of the main differences between sort of DKIT and your previous school, what, be it whether that was maybe um, 
whether you whether you're doing a PLC or whether you came straight from secondary school, I um, just kind of want to see about how you find the differences um, kind of straight off um, from 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 that previous sort of educational environment. And um, so, um, Josh, if I maybe go to you in this one. And yes, sure. The lot of is that it was a strange tradition as it was with most people find it. Like um, I know an OV obviously it's different to um, just secondary school because it's PLC. But still uh, when I moved from D there's a bit of difficult uh, sort of rise and difficult uh, difficulty. Uh, but also with that was a sense of freedom too, because uh, you were doing the stuff you wanted to do, like your interests and stuff. Well, ideally you're interested. Um, and um, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. The lectures, tons of there are way more lectures I feel that in PLC, so they're they're always help, they're always there to help you. And also, you have to meet them halfway. Obviously, because uh, just a bit of uh, yeah, it's just sort of uh, I really enjoyed it. So it was really good. Okay, that's great. Um, and um, Jessica, maybe you could ask you then how you find kind of coming from. Uh, did you came to school, did you, or did you came from secondary? First person from secondary school. Um, I went to secondary school that had about just a normal so about 30 students in a class and then the transition for the size wasn't a big difference like there's only about maybe 50 in my course and as I say like for DKRT you're a name and not a number so you have that like personal relationship with your lecturers so I could go and talk to them like the way I could talk to my teachers in school so if I had any queries like I could always just go and talk to them and then as well like meeting friends as well like a lot of people are from the local area and I'm from only like 20 minutes down the road as well. So the people in in my course are from the area as well. So that was a nice thing as well. Yeah, okay, that's great. And um, um, I'll, say, I'll go to then Patrick, if I can ask you then, it's the kind of same, same question then. So how you find it from sort of the, the kind of school side of things? Yeah, so like transitioning, well, like life in, in there is like, because it's quite bigger. So you're just meeting new people all the time. So you might not always see the same person as you would in secondary school. So you always have a chance to make new friends. Uh, there's a lot of also social events and stuff like that. So uh, all the time, it's like quite easy to make friends than you would in secondary school. And because it's not as big, um, you're able to always find like someone for you or, or like anything like that. Yeah, no, that's great, and that, I suppose it's not a question I had, but I mean, I mean, in terms of the um, the societies or sports teams as well, I know it's another way of being able to meet people. Um, and I know Sammy, I think you're involved with a few of the societies and sports teams, so maybe you could tell us a wee bit about that and how that kind of helped you in DKT. Yeah, um, I joined the volunteer society, which I co-run as well. Like I'm co-chair for it and then I also joined the basketball the ladies basketball team in DKT so that was it another good way of just meeting new people and just kind of being part of the community and then in that way it was just being involved in a lot of things and just a lot of volunteering as well with the college yeah okay that's great that's great um has anyone, has anyone else actually had any sort of things with the sports or the society side of things that was kind of helped them integrate a bit um, I had an ambassador. I was an ambassador for uh, the open day, and I felt that was a great way to integrate with new students and mix and make new friends. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like. Okay, that's great, and we, we would have liked this year for obviously if we were on campus, we could have done something um, with the uh, with the student ambassadors as well. So, but that's um, that's great, 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 great way for this to have um, some sort of interaction with these as, as well. So that's good. Um, we're going to move on to the next part then, and as we were talking about the. Um, the teaching and the learning experience at DKIT. Um, has there been anything that surprised you? I know some of you touched upon the kind of smaller class sizes, but is there anything else that you think kind of is, is really good about DKIT from a learning perspective that, that's kind of, um, that you'd kind of like to, like to point out? Um, maybe, maybe Elise, if I could go to you on this one. Yeah, I find that because like, I'm in a marketing um, degree that my lecturers will talk to us like we're like their colleagues rather than their students. So it's great when we're kind of going into the work environment that we are being talked to like we're equal. Because when we, I, I literally only came from work placement like last semester. So I, that would kind of prepared me for going into work placement because I already knew that I wasn't like under people. I was the same level as them because my lecturers prepared us for that and it was very helpful. Okay, that's great. That's great. Um, and um, me, Josh, I, I could ask the same question to you. I mean, how do you find the, the teaching side of things? And again, has anything maybe sort of surprised you or, or 
been been a, been a pleasant surprise from what you what you maybe thought of it would have been like. Um, yeah, I, I think that I think the sort of student teacher relationship is very good in the sense that uh, it like at least just says completely different uh, um, sort of the art that you go completely. Um, and, um, and I know a few of my lectures said uh, they're very funny. There's always a bit of sense of humor amongst a lot of them. Um, so it's sort of it's uh, it's an easy easy uh, transition in a way to go into some even if it's a pretty well class can still seem big. Uh, when you have a sort of uh, sort of charismatic teacher and uh, lecturer, I mean, it's sort of handy in a way. Um, and also, uh, like I said, they're um, they way they're way more than healthy, like to communicate with you either through email or at the end of the class, uh, getting to reach them in the in the home page a few times. That they message quite a lot, of and they're finding in the right direction in terms of books and libraries, stuff and other stuff. Like that. But uh, no, they're very helpful. Yeah, it's really good uh, sort of uh, communication. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, okay, well, the next one that we have is um, I suppose how you've um, asked for anyone who maybe had the the practical hands-on sort of element of your course or a work experience or a placement element. So um, um, maybe I will go to um, Elise on that because you've probably done some sort of work placement element. So maybe you could talk a wee bit about that outside of it. Yeah, I just literally completed my uh, work placement. Obviously, I had to cut off short because of COVID coming in. But um, I was working in a marketing a department in a pet manufacturing company, just literally in Dundalk. Um, I literally was helping out with like how, um, the analysts, analyzing of like products coming in and making sure sales were correct and all that, which I didn't actually know how to do initially. But I had to train on the job, which was complicated and fun at the same time. But... It was it was easy and it was fun and I enjoyed it. That's good. That's good. I would say there's no better way to learn than, than kind of doing the job in in, in, in yeah. as well. Um, I was the same. I did a marketing degree and until you kind of get into that kind of job environment, it's kind of hard to it's it's, it's hard. It's, that's the way you learn. That's the way you properly learn. Um, Jessica, have you done any work placement elements yet? Or there's no work placement in my course but um obviously like with the summertime and all that thing like i would probably encourage students to do it and um, it would have been something that i was looking at as well for the summer but then covid kind of put it short but obviously always to keep a part-time job while you're in college because even if you're not working in the area that you're in everything always links together no matter what job you're in at the moment especially with business and, and have you found that uh, even with the kind of even with say a part-time job that that, that I ever conflicted with your studies. Did you ever find that difficult in terms of um, the the kind of time management between the the kind of part-time job and, and studying at the same time? I just try to work um, on the weekends and maybe like a late evening. But um, especially like in college, we always had access to the library. So if I ever had like an hour or two break and we had maybe a little assignment to do, we just go get it done. When you're home in the evening, if you have a spare evening, sit down for an hour, like it'll it'll fly by so always keep a part-time job once you're in college as well okay okay that's great thank you um okay um i suppose then the question that i, I i'm the, most looking forward to hearing and um, what do you find the best bits are of dkit i mean in terms of if you were to kind of maybe pick out a few real kind of best parts about it um that for for prospective students who will be watching this video and um, kind of what, what what would those kind of um the best, most positive points about DKITB. Um, Patrick, if I go to you for this one. Uh, so with DKIT, I'd say the uh, most things, most students look forward to is like all the events, because like most weeks, maybe like every week, there's always an event on, there's always something different to do. Uh, like Freshers Week, there's Rag Week, and there's a lot of different talks and stuff throughout the year. Uh, different ones do like mental health and stuff so you're always engaging in something different apart from studies as well so and there's a many societies to join from like sports to like different groups and you just get a chance to experience something different okay that's brilliant um, um sammy maybe if i come to you it's sort of the same same question the kind of most positive parts of of dkt for you um it's just like since it's such a small like um campus it's really nice to feel part of a community even if you don't know people but it's nice to see friendly faces and no one is just left feeling alone and i like the accessibility for the likes of student services and stuff if you needed any help there's a lot of help on campus so no one is left alone so 
that's one of the best parts I think side of the teaching okay okay that's great and um, maybe um, Josh will come to you for this one as well um, yeah sure um, um, yeah I suppose I have a couple of few um, favorite things with DKT especially the so when you're in the lecture, you do get you don't really get talking too much to your um, two friends, but so I highly recommend obviously outside of college being open to them. You have the canteen, you obviously have loads of student uh, student areas where you can hang out and have fun. And um, also like at Hatch you have various events going on, so uh, you have um, various events and readies and all sorts of stuff and uh, I highly, highly recommend that access space where you meet people and get chatting properly outside of college. Uh, when the college, you have uh, very cafe shops and all your stuff, and that's where the fun and banter is. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's where your memories are made. So, uh, oh, there's a couple of good, good things by NDKT. Keep me going. That's great. Okay, thank you. Um, um, so, was a question then, um, and I'll stick with you, Josh, on this one, just in terms of what you're going to do after your course, um, if, you've, if you've thought that far ahead. Um, you're in, I think, year two now, isn't that right, Josh? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, um, I was, uh, I said, a big deep passion for history and um, currently um, I actually have a part-time, my part-time job is working in a museum, so uh, it sort of correlates what I'm doing and it sort of enhances that. Um, the idea of the idea situation, obviously, is after when I finish college, I get a job in a museum, sort of, um, and uh, Go travel in a way and I work my experience up in a museum. I have a curator on the museum, so I don't like uh, sort of that whole idea of being uh, here for all your flowers. So, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, so, uh, well, I, I like to be a curator in a way, so that's the idea of the situation. And then I yeah, know I'm doing a master's or something to develop my uh, sort of the education. Of it, so. Okay, that's great, thank you. Um, and um, Jessica, maybe I can ask you the same question. What do you kind of hope to do then after after the course is finished? Yeah, um, as I said, like in the business course, you cover like every aspect of business. So I've got a taster for everything. And if I change my mind in the future, I can always go and do something else. But um, I'm hoping to focus on like the financial services sector. Um, I really like finance and hopefully maybe work in a bank or credit union or one of the, the big multinational companies in the financial services sector. Um, I've always liked finance and especially this course has really helped me you know set that in stone that it's what I wanted to do and then as Josh said as well maybe after go on and do a master's at some stage as well but definitely get out into the workplace and do something that's to do with that. Okay that's great thank you Um then the last kind of sort of point I have is if you had sort of any advice to kind of give um, applicants this year who are maybe looking to start in September 2021 uh, with DKAT or certainly considering DKAT is one of their options um, and looking to do a course within the School of Business and Humanities, you know, what would your sort of advice be to them before they apply and maybe after they start in September? Um, so maybe Elise, if I can start with you on this one. Yes, yeah, so because our course is very specific in marketing, I'd say to these probably potential first year students, research marketing and know what it is before you go in. Because I had no clue properly actually what marketing meant. I literally thought it was like this big kind of movie thing with the advert, like they're making adverts and going off to do this fancy work. But I didn't realise behind it there was all like the ditty, itty bitty great detail. So I'd say to them to research all that before you go in and don't panic, relax, they'll get to know it. It's all the terminology will stick. <laughs> Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, and Sammy, maybe I can ask yourself uh, the same question then. Kind of um, anything you kind of um, kind of say to kind of advise any um, future applicants then at DKIT? I would definitely tell them to actually do research the business because there is a quite a few modules where you come in and you think it's an easy breezy subject but you get in there and it's not what you think it is or you think you know what it is and it's not so it's better to know, know them inside out because if you don't want like one element of it that can ruin a course for you but other than that I liked every subject I found law very interesting just the introductions into the different parts of law so I would say a lot of people might be interested in that but not to be scared off by what you see it's actually quite not a bad course it's not a bad course like it's a great course to do because I like it and stuff but you just need to research and you know what you're getting into so you're not getting into college and being surprised of what you chose yeah and i think that's important as well especially for yeah. the business courses there there's business and management there's business and technology there's yeah business and so, on. so 
you need to look at the modules. You need to see what you're going to um, want to do out of those and um, use that to help you decide which, which of the courses is the right one for you. So, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. works out better when you do it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Um, and Patrick, then I'll, I'll finish off then with you. Um, so, sort of, what, what advice would you have for, for, for students coming through? Uh, advice I'd give for new uh, incoming students is that I'd always make sure to like put your studies before anything else because you can easily get carried away and distracted because there's many distractions like snack box being one of them and stuff like that playing pool and stuff uh, just not to get carried away throughout the year and to always uh, be focused on your studies because at the end of the day you're here to get a degree you're not here to mess about so yeah, yeah that's all I'd say yeah that's good. That's good. That's good. really good advice, Patrick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's super. Um, well, look, that's it. That's kind of pretty much the end of the end of my questions. Um, so um, I just kind of want to thank uh, all of you for 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 coming um, and for giving your um, your advice and talking about your experience at DKAP. Um, I know it'll be really helpful for um, myself and other people in marketing or. Uh, even the, the, let, the program directors, we can talk to other colleagues from home, but nothing will actually resonate with potential students more than current students tell, talking about their time. So um, we really appreciate you giving up the time um, to do this with us today. Um, and um, just anyone who's watching this, there's also um, other um, videos um, to watch and, and content um, on the um, Open Day platform. Um, they're on throughout the whole day. Um, and from 5 p.m. on Monday to 7 p.m., there's also going to be a live Q&A session with um, program directors from all the different courses within the School of Business and Humanities. So if you have questions um, at that stage about anything, and um, you have anything even about modules, um, about any part of the course, that's the time you can get your questions in and the program directors will be on hand and we will force them to answer the questions um, and uh, make sure that, uh, that you get the answers that you need. Um, but look, that's great. Thank you very much, folks, for, for, for your time and thanks everyone for coming. Um, and that's been great. So um, thank you.